I'm Eric Wellman. I'm Simsbury's first selectman. And it is a pleasure and an honor to welcome you here today, because today we're going to do something that has never been done before in the state of Connecticut. Yeah, come on. That's an applause line. Uh, I, was, um, I was on the Old Growth Forest Network's website, and they have a nice map of the United States where you can see pins where each old growth forest is that's part of the network. And Connecticut is devoid of a pin, and we're changing that today, so I'm very excited about that. I would like to uh, recognize members of the Board of Selectmen who are here, Cheryl Cook, uh, Mike Payne, um, and I want to thank the entire Board of Selectmen for their support and championing of, uh, of inducting Belden Forest into the Old Growth Forest Network. I'd also like to recognize town staff who's been instrumental in this process, our town manager, Maria Capriola, Public Works Director, Tom Roy, Parks and Rec Director, Tom Tybersky, and Park Superintendent, Orlando Cassiano. Thank you. Please give a round of applause to them. I'd also like to extend a huge congratulations to Susan Messino. Susan is a Simsbury resident and her work and expertise is instrumental to what we're doing here in town, and we're so lucky to have you. I <laughs> and I also want to recognize our state representative, John Hampton. John, thank you for all of your advocacy. Many of you know that Simsbury is celebrating its 350th anniversary in the coming year, and it is humbling to think that there are trees behind us, I learned yesterday, some trees that have witnessed almost half of that history. Trees that were saplings when Ensign Bickford was 20 years old. Trees that were here when the Civil War concluded. And trees that, whose rings bear some of the scars from severe storms that Simsbury experienced in the 1930s. When we walk through Belden Forest at the conclusion of today's ceremony. We are walking through a piece of Simsbury's history. The old growth forest designation that the Board of Selectmen and I are so proud to support is a step in preserving that history, a piece of our open space that we are so proud, and I'm so glad to be with you here today. Thank you. I'd like to introduce uh, Joan Maloof, uh, founder and executive director of the Old Growth Forest Network. Thank you. What a beautiful day to be here under the trees. And thank you all for coming. Ah, so the Old Growth Forest Network was formed because um, Probably all of us here love forests, but we know that we need to keep the next generation also connected to the forest. And unless they're connected to the forest and can experience and love it, we're going to continue to lose forest cover. So we want to honor the forests that remain, and we want to make older forests easy for people to visit and accessible for them to visit. So how do we do that? I'm sure all of us have stories of forests that we've lost in our lives. You know, that vacant lot that got cut or that farm next door and um, these stories about the forests that got away. Well, today we're here to celebrate one of the forests that didn't get away. And in fact, it is going to be preserved in perpetuity for all generations to visit. And that is the goal of the organization, the Old Growth Forest Network. We want to make sure there's one forest in each county of the U.S. protected from logging, open to the public, where people can visit 
and develop a relationship to those forests and the animals can live and those forests can clean the air and can clean the, and the, and, and the water. And um, we, right now, we started in 2012. We have, this will be forest number 104 in the network in 22 states. And we have more counties to go, but I'm very excited that we are here to celebrate Connecticut's first forest. And how we do our work is by getting a volunteer in each county that also believes in our mission and that will help us make sure that the forest in their community, in their county, is preserved. And in our county here, Susan Messino was our county coordinator and she recognized that this was a special forest and that um, it needed that extra little layer of protection to make sure that it would always be here and remain standing. So we thank Susan for your help in being um, our county coordinator. And we thank the town commissioners for agreeing that this was the correct thing to do. And at this moment, we are going to celebrate the inclusion of Belden Woods into the Old Growth Forest Network. Thank you. So the Old Growth Forest Network is a national organization. And as I travel the country, I meet these remarkable individuals that are putting so much of themselves into preserving forests for the future. And I recognize that we have awards for the best actors. We have awards for the best singers. We have awards for the best sports persons. But we didn't have awards for those people that were working to save the forest. So the Old Growth Forest Network started that award system. We call it the Forest Advocate Award. And um, Robert Leverett, who's here with us, is one of the former recipients of the Forest Advocate Award. And today I would like to give our award to Susan Messino for her work. All I'm going to say is, if you know me, you can't imagine how much this means to me. And I'm really spending a lot of my time trying to learn more about the natural world. My PhD is in biology. I spent the last year um, working on a project at Harvard Forest on forests and brain health. And all I can say is there is so much we don't know. And we have to protect these intact natural areas for the future for so many reasons for the wildlife, for the full biodiversity, for new medicines we haven't discovered yet, and for people to be able to really learn about the natural world and have access to it. So that's why I believe so much in the mission of the Old Growth Forest Network. And I have to thank Simsbury for being such a remarkable town, for being open to this, for being thoughtful, for being so visionary about open space. And this is just the next step in that remarkable history in our town. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, Susan. We have, uh, we have three uh, speakers that we're very lucky to have with us today. And the first is Robert Levitt, co-founder of Native Tree Society and Friends of Mohawk Trail State Forest. Thank you. Thank you, and this is indeed a great honor to be here with Joan, Susan, the Old Growth Forest Network, and my cohorts over here, the three of us, Jared Lockwood and Ray Aslan. We are the, well, we started out being the Tree Amigos and we've changed that to the Tree Musketeers. <laughs> but uh, we love places like this. I'm obviously not a native New Englander. I think you can pick that up right away. I 
grew up in the mountains of eastern Tennessee and went into the United States Air Force for a career there. And they tried to beat all my accent out of me, but I have a little bit left. Uh, and when I came to New England, uh, exploration of the countryside all around was natural to me. And some trip, I wound up coming down the main street of Simsbury and I looked and I said, wow, look at all these great sycamores because trees have been always a part of my life. And then I learned about the Pinchot sycamore and uh, Jared and I just remeasured it this morning. I represent American Forests, the national champion tree program and whatnot. And although that isn't the national champion, it ought to be. <laughs> and and we, uh, we're, going, we're going to continue to try to support the, the measuring and the monitoring and the, and the telling of the stories of these great trees that you have. But I never really thought in a million years that we would we'd be here actually doing this kind of a dedication. As I said, I've driven that road many, many times, looked up there and said, hey, that's a pretty handsome forest. And it's, it is, it's a great forest. And, and it, just as Joan says, it carries so much information that is so easy to lose in our fast-paced society. So I'm very honored to be a part, a part of this. And when we go on the walk, uh, maybe if we can, we can uh, participate more and answer questions uh, as you may have them. Anyway, uh, being bashful or short in, in my presentations is not one of my hallmarks, so I better stop right now. <laughs> Thank you very much. It's now my pleasure to introduce Eric Hammerling, who's Executive Director of, um, of the Connecticut Forest and Park Association. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It's great to see so many familiar faces, um, and it's always wonderful to be back in Simsbury. Um, some of you know that I was here for about six years as Executive Director of the Farmington River Watershed Association. Um, and worked right over there and uh, came to this place from time to time. It really is a special special forest that's being celebrated today. Um, I don't know how many of you um, know wh how special Simsbury is. It's just like if you live in New York City, maybe you don't go to the Statue of Liberty or uh, the Empire State Building, but Simsbury really is uh, the center of conservation uh, in Connecticut, and you could certainly argue much broader even than Connecticut, and I'll tell you why. Um, of course, you heard about the Pinchot sycamore and what a special tree that is, and of course, this is the birthplace of Gifford Pinchot in, in Simsbury. Um, but there are also two wonderful conservation organizations that I'm uh, personally very familiar with who got their starts right here in town. Um, the uh, Farmington River Watershed Association was launched in Simsbury uh, in the Weetog section of town in uh, 1953. And uh, at that time was the first watershed organization other than the Connecticut River Watershed Council that was focusing on your watershed. And so that was a really special thing to happen right here in Simsbury. Also, the Connecticut Forest and Park Association, which is the oldest conservation organization in the state, um, we, we will actually be turning 125 next year, um, was also founded right here in Simsbury in the Weetog section of Simsbury. So it's not even, it's both Simsbury and the Weetog section of Simsbury. Somehow um, is that uh, special. So if you're wondering where CFPA had its first gathering, this was at the home of Reverend Horace and uh, Mary Winslow, right at the corner of Winslow Place, where now there's the Riverview down that road. Um, that home was where about 20 people gathered to say, we need to try to protect forests in Connecticut. And at that time, our forests were not very healthy in this state. We've come a long way in terms of our understanding of forest health and making a commitment like protecting Belden Forest for the future is a way to really ensure that that understanding, that commitment to protecting forests is something that will outlive all of us and that's a wonderful thing. So I, I thank the town of Simsbury for being um, really the center of conservation in New England, perhaps the United States, perhaps the world. Um, and for, once again, leading the way with this designation, um, which I think is a special way to talk about the, the importance of forests, 
not just locally, but much more broadly. So congratulations to all of you, and I'm looking forward to walking through the forest. Thank you. I'd like to welcome next Amy Blamore Patterson, who's Executive Director of the Connecticut Land Conservation Council. I'm so glad um, there's no podium because I usually don't public speak in hiking boots because I completely disappear. So I'm really <laughs> delighted to just talk to you today. Thank you so much for having me here. It is truly an honor. Um, Connecticut Land Conservation Council is the umbrella organization for Connecticut's land conservation community, including its 137 or so land trusts. And you know, these are the these are the events that we live for. CLCC's mission is to increase the pace, quality, scale, and permanency of land conservation in Connecticut. And you know, I don't need to tell you that the news for our environment these days is, is pretty dire. Um, you know, whether it's land, air, water, climate. Um, we're all struggling to, to wrap our heads around that. But it's events like today that truly give me tremendous hope. We know what we have to do. We have to save more land. We have to protect the land that we have already conserved. We have to plant more trees, and we have to save more forests. You know, last night I had the opportunity to attend the film with my husband, The Lost Forests of New England, and it was tremendous. It was just wonderful. I couldn't go to sleep afterwards when I got home. I was just so excited, and my mind was really going. And even though it was dark in the room, I did take some notes. And um, one of the, there were two that really struck, struck me. And one of them was um, from Neil Pedersen, the senior ecologist from Harvard Forest, when he said, and he was talking about the multitude of benefits that forests bring to us. And he said, forests are just getting started in 100 years. And I thought, 100 years? And my first thought was like, 100 years? But then I thought, well, going back to our mission, our mission is, our mission is in perpetuity. So 100 years, we can do that. That's not so bad. We can do that. And so at CLCC, we're looking to generate tools for land trusts and for communities. We've created a, a forever wild model easement um, we're having a workshop on that next week. It's on our website. I encourage you all to look at that and think about it and, and know that it's there as a tool for other places in our communities that want to be protected forever so that we can have more ce celebrations like this. And then the last thing, I, I, or the last statement that I wanted to kind of paraphrase came from Joan. And she said, and, and this is what I relate to the building Old Growth Forest, that these places remind us of what our planet can be if we just leave it alone. And that really stuck with me, too. So congratulations to all of you for having the foresight to protect this really special place and leave it alone for generations to come. Thank you. And that concludes our formal program. I invite you to enjoy some refreshments, followed by a walk through Belden Forest. Thank you all for being here today. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.